it's Sam from Nonfiction Horror, and today's video is going to be all about tarot cards. Are they good? Are they bad? And all about my thoughts. So a few years ago, I did dabble in tarot cards and I did readings, I did the research behind it and I was really, really into it. I don't do it as much anymore. It's actually been maybe about a year or so since I have even touched my deck, but I decided I would go ahead and give some of my knowledge because on YouTube, there's very little sources or any education on it. There are some girls who I did find. I'll go ahead and post down below what my favorite tarot card channel is. She's absolutely amazing, totally educated. She knows everything about every single card she's absolutely great so for me I'm just gonna add on to the rest of the sources that are already out there and give my experiences on tarot cards so this is the little box that I keep them in I got it at Ross and this was $6.99 catch it on it and ta -da! there are my cards so I have the traditional set this one is the most famous one the one that you probably see in um, most of the movies. It's the most traditional, I believe, the first deck ever made. There are so many beautiful decks that are out there, so I highly encourage you to research ones that you might be more interested than the traditional deck. My favorite deck that I probably would just purchase for artwork, or honestly, there was a point where I wanted to get some of the tarot cards artwork tattooed on me, because they're absolutely Gorgeous. That is the is the Wild Unknown tarot deck, and so um, that one is gorgeous. So I would say that you might want to start off with the beginner deck just because it is traditional. Sometimes when you branch off to other decks, it can get a little bit more confusing because the imagery is not the uh, typical card. For example, if this is the uh, Ten of Cups, a Ten of Cups might look completely different in a different deck. So it might get a little bit confusing if the images are completely different and you kind of have to not only know what the card is by sight, but then you're gonna also have to decipher what it means even though it looks nothing like the literal Ten of Cups. Where to start? Okay, so I'm gonna kind of give some tips for beginners or just some experiences on my own. I know a lot of people don't necessarily uh, dabble in tarot card decks or anything of this sort because I do know it has a negative connotation because it deals with the occult. And so I remember when I was telling everybody I was getting into tarot cards, they their eyes got huge like, what? Oh my gosh, you're going to hell. And so I just laugh that off because for me, you can either believe wholeheartedly in the deck or you can just do it as a means of entertainment. You can do it for fun. For me, I was really serious about it. And like I said, I did tons of research. In fact, I'm gonna go bring my notebook out and I literally researched every single card in the deck and what it meant. And it's just, it's really overwhelming. So let me go get that really quick. One second. Go ahead and show you, this was the journal that I used. I got this at Hobby Lobby for $7.99. So in my little notebook, I literally did so many notes and wrote down what every card meant and then kind of some like little tidbits to help me kind of remember what it is just by sight because there are so many things that go with each card there's meanings when the card is upright which this is a really bad card by the way but when this card is upright and when the card is upside down it means something different as well so not only do you need to know what the card means you need to know the opposite version of it as well. So it's really, really intimidating to learn. It's not just something you're gonna just pick up these cards and be like, okay, let me give you a reading. No, it's probably gonna take you a good month and of daily, daily research and practice and trial and error. There's so much that goes into it. So now, I'm not gonna get too much into the breakdown of the cards necessarily, what each of the cards means. Um, you have your you know, your main cards that are the like High Priestess, the Sun, the Lovers, stuff of that nature. There is the Pentacles, which yes, it is a pentagram, but once again, these cards really don't have any negative connotation to them. I think there's just a stigma around them. You have the Cups, which means joy, good luck, good fortune. The Wands pretty much mean growth, moving forward, good ideas, education, higher thinking, uh, maybe new ideas are coming into your life, you're thinking about starting something new, pretty much it's more of a mental state where you're kind of progressing and thought behind your movements, thoughts behind your actions, more of a higher thinking 
granted there's so many different ways to interpret it cups this is like the most ideal cup or most ideal card that you'd want this is, you see this card it pretty much means that something great is going to happen good fortune uh, you might get that job promotion that you're wanting stuff of that nature so it is a pretty good card now <laughs> the swords you nerds uh you don't ever want to get a swords card they are really really bad negative connotation they pretty much mean <sighs> pretty much means negative stuff is going on not only in your life, maybe you're going through a crisis right now, uh, whether it be a divorce, a breakup, or maybe you're feeling like you're going to break up, maybe you're unhappy in the situation that you're in. It pretty much always has a sense of struggle or a despair. So the swords are never a great card to get. I have the lovers, which is one of my favorite cards. I absolutely love this card just because of the imagery. It's really pretty. I love the whole man and woman. I just, I think that's absolutely gorgeous. That So you have to take it all with a grain of salt. A lot of these things, I think that's where tarot cards, once again, a lot of people feel like they're really bad for you. They're really negative but they're really not. You have to really put that negative energy into the card deck because really other than that, it's just really fun. You can really go off and be like, there's balance in your life and you're, you know, everything is just coming in and you're centered and you're grounded. I mean, you really can just make up whatever you want, really, if you had to. If you're just starting out and you're trying to impress your friends, you can really just look at the picture and kind of go off of it. For example, death. It really has a negative connotation. Whenever you're watching a scary movie, they get the death card or the devil card, which I'll show in a little bit. And the death card is actually one of my favorites, not because it means you're going to die. It doesn't mean you're, you know, you're going to walk outside and you're going to get struck by lightning, but it really means more of the end of something and the growth or the beginning of something new, something that has been giving you a hard time in your life. Maybe you're in a relationship that's a really unhealthy relationship. This typically means it's going to end and there's going to be a new beginning. At least that's my interpretation of this card. Once again, there is so many different interpretations. People might disagree. Once again, because when it does mean something is upside down that might mean that you are actually trapped in the situation that you're in and there is not going to be an immediate resolve so once again they do mean different things when they are upside down so that's something to always keep in mind this one i think is so funny this little cloud trying to give him a cup and he's like bitch please leave me alone i'm just like so the cards are really funny this one is really really good this one is a really negative card this is the tower and is a man and a woman falling out of a building but Funny enough, I actually did a reading right after I broke up with my boyfriend at the time and he started seeing somebody else. So being the crazy ex-girlfriend that I am, I did a reading based off of the relationship. Like, is she gonna be the one that he marries? And this card actually uh, popped up and it made me really happy because honestly, shortly after, um, by I think like three or four months after they got together, they broke up. So for me, like I was saying, sometimes if you really believe in the cards, it's funny if something does really actually happen from a reading that you did and uh, for me all my readings were accurate they did actually happen That's something that you have to kind of watch out for because I found myself wanting to do readings so frequently like I want to make a big decision let me go ask the deck let me ask the cards what do they say and you kind of get addicted to it because like I said a lot of the readings I did ended up happening within a couple of months a couple of weeks so I at that point just took a step back because I didn't want to rely on these cards. It should be a source of fun. In fact, a couple of years ago, I told everybody at the salon I worked at, I was like, everybody's Christmas present is going to be a personal tarot reading and a candle. And a lot of them were like, please don't give me that devil witchcraft. And I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people really are against tarot cards because I get it. People assume that you are letting in the demons and they're going to be released and they're going to be living in your house and that is not true so if that's only one thing i could debunk about tarot cards it's no you're not going to have little demons running around your house things aren't going to be moving doors are not going to be opening closing in fact i did all of my readings all of my research all of my uh well, doing everything with my cards I did at home by myself when I was living alone at the time so I never felt frightened I did a lot of my readings in the dark with just candles around so once again I never feel I never felt frightened and if I did I know I would have immediately stopped and threw these cards out but here they are a couple years later so here is the devil card much scary <laughs> much frightening but once again um, the devil card really does I feel 
mean that there's a really bad person in your life. I do believe this one for me is very specific. I did a reading about a certain person in my life and this card popped up all different readings that I did. Like I said, either five or six, this card popped up. And it was probably the most toxic relationship I had been in. I was really young, I was really impressionable, and the person that I with was older, and they were definitely not necessarily good for me by any means. None of my family liked him. He was that typical bad boy. It ended really horribly. Whenever I did a reading about this specific person in my life, whether I was with him or we were off, this card always popped up with him. So like I said, sometimes it was freakishly coincidental or accurate like i said you really i mean there's so many cars in here and you know you shuffle them and you recharge them you cleanse you clear them out you do so much to these cards so the fact that sometimes i would get repetitive cards with different readings in that instance that time that i got the double card four or five times with that specific person it really kind of makes you feel like maybe this is real maybe this is accurate thing to challenge yourself i definitely would say to get a tarot card deck i do know that you are going to get a lot of raised eyebrows i don't recommend um if you are under the age of maybe necessarily 18 or if you're living at home i don't recommend that you get a deck without your parents consent because even though like i said you're not necessarily letting anything negative into your life like i said i had a great experience i had a great time nothing but raves for the not only this deck but the experiences you do have to be mindful that not everybody is going to condone you being into the occult necessarily or I mean like I said I don't identify myself as a witch or that I don't do spells I don't I mean <laughs> I don't do spells or anything like that but I do only cut my hair based off of the moon cycle I do some of that kind of new age stuff but other than that um, you have to be respectful that other people might not encourage this so I think once you live on your own Go ahead and buy all the stuff that you want. Um, go ahead and make your altar, all your tables and stuff like that. You can go ahead and buy your own crystals because you will need a clear quartz to go ahead and clear your cards. There's a whole bunch of stuff beforehand. You can even use the deck that you need to go ahead and do. So that's why I'm saying that I really don't want you guys to, um, that's why I'm trying not to go into too much depth about the whole order necessarily. This is more just my experience, my thoughts on tarot in general, but there is a lot more research that you need to go ahead and do because once again like I said it's not just something you pick up and you start showing cards to everybody and you're just a pro there's a lot that goes into it I enjoyed this video about my tarot deck my experience my thoughts um, I really definitely think that it is something that should not be so shunned but I definitely know a lot of different religions are totally against anything occult and I totally respect that I totally understand that um, for example I have my limits I will not play a Ouija board or if I ever do which I don't anticipate that happening I'm not gonna do it at my house that's my one rule if I'm ever gonna play the Ouija board it's gonna be at my friend's house because if we are letting in some demons or ghosts, it ain't gonna be at my place, okay? So other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions for me, feel free to leave a comment and I will go ahead and leave some knowledge for you. I do have, one second, I do have one book recommendation. This is Tarot Secrets by Amy Lerner and Monte Farber. It's an absolutely amazing book that I highly recommend that you check out because it literally tells you what each card means upright and what each card means reversed. So it takes the guesswork out. This was literally like my textbook go-to. It has everything that you're ever gonna need. Really clear, really concise, it's not hard to read. It has some different spreads because spreads is really important too. I always did the traditional spreads. I didn't get too fancy, but you can really break it down to, I mean, there's so many different spreads that you can go ahead and get into, like I said, and that means Here's a love one. If you want a relationship spread, there's some for work. There's some for, I mean, there's just, you name it. You can go ahead and look it up. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Any questions or comments, leave down below. Go ahead and click that little tiny friendly go and click on him to subscribe. If you guys want to know anything more about tarot cards, go ahead and leave questions down below. Or if you just think I'm cuckoo crazy, you can leave a comment as well. I've heard it all, trust me. So thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. Bye.